All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Dodo's Riding Dinosaurs. Now, this is for those who have never played it before. This is going to be a video that explains basically the most basic gameplay of this game. So I'm not going to explain all of the additional rules, additional abilities, and things like that that you can add to the game to make it more interesting. Like, for instance, um, I'm not going to explain um, the racer abilities. You can choose to either play with them or not, or not play with them. So each, for instance, Dodo and Dinosaur have a racer ability here. And they're all different. And it makes, obviously, each, each character you're playing with, each Dodo, each Dinosaur that you choose, a, a unique ability. You can choose to play with them or not play with them. But for your first game, and it may, it may not be wise to play with them for your first game. Just to give you an idea of how the game works and stuff. So I'm not going to explain how those abilities work. So that's why the cards are on this side. Otherwise, they'd be on the other side. So you can look at the ability and use it and activate it when it happens. So I'm not going to explain those. Another thing um, we're not going to explain is we are not going to explain how the... Uh, different boards work. There are four. Four boards you can play with in this game. This is the standard board. It has no special rules. The other three boards, including this one, all have special rules that make them all unique and interesting. And they're fun and cool for sure. But we're not going to explain how these work in this video either. Just playing with this board here. Uh, and then there's also these extra other cards you can add to the game. You can add these cards to the game that add even more abilities as well. You can add these to the game as well, but we're not going to explain how these work, so we're not going to talk about them any further either. This will be just for those who want to play the game just once, just to see how it all works. Okay? So let's get started. Now, this is a racing game. And so you're going to want to try to obviously win the race. Now, the way it starts out is, first of all, whoever is the fastest player, whoever is the fastest person in real life that you're playing with, they will get the first player token. And then you can do in, you know, clockwise order, for instance, or something like that. But in clockwise order, you're going to set up your racers. So if you're the fastest player and you get this token here, fastest person in real life, that means you're going to be on the farthest from the track. So this is uh, Seely and Lyo, which I chose, okay, for my character, for first player. So they go farthest back. And then the next person up would be this one here, Martian Spike. So that's why there are two spaces back. And the player who's going last um, for the first round, gets to be the first player closest to the finish line, which is here. So you want to do one full lap. And obviously, we're starting on the other side of the finish line. So one full lap all the way around. And then the player, now there might be multiple players. At the end of the round, there might be multiple players that have passed the finish line. But it's whoever's highest up on the track after after somebody passes the finish line at the end of a round, then that's the player who wins, whoever's farthest up. We'll explain that again um, when we talk about how end of round works. So on the first round, or any round for that matter, each player is going to get six six of these cards here, okay? These, these cards here. And they're going to choose one. There are two phases of each round. The first phase is the scheming phase. And the second phase is the running phase. The scheming phase means is means you're going to choose one of these cards here and you're going to secretly place it face down. Okay? And then all the other players are going to do that too simultaneously. They're all going to choose a card that they want to play. Okay? So, all right. So, for instance, since I'm technically Seely and Lyo, let's say I want to do... Something cool. Um, roll one dice and advance that amount. Dino jump. 
So this is what's going to happen. When you play a card, you're going to get to move the number indicated on the left side of the card, most likely. Something might happen that might cancel your ability out, but most likely you it won't cancel out your movement. So this is the number on which you're moving. So you're playing the cards to move up the track. So I've got a two, I've got a one, I've got a one, I've got a one, and I've got two twos here, okay? There are other cards that will have higher numbers than this too. So I just didn't get any of those, okay? So I'm gonna choose one to play. So, um, and the reason why this is the scheming phase there's two types of cards you can play. You might have three different car colored cards in your hand. So these are blue normal cards, okay? The red ones are red aggressive cards. And if you get a green card, which was definitely in this player's hand, so if you have a green card, this these are reaction cards. You'll play them in a reaction to perhaps something your opponents are doing. So you will not use, you will not set one of these green cards aside to play face down for the scheming phase. These cards are not used for the scheming phase. So ignore them for the scheming phase. So, um, yeah, so you're going to choose either a red or a blue. Now, if you choose an aggressive card, a red card, okay? So let's say I chose a red card, and I flip this over, and my opponent, one of them, also plays a red card. So if they play a red card... At the same in the same round, I play a red card. These effects that are on the cards, whatever they do, it does not matter because now we are enraged at each other, and they become obsolete. You can no longer use the abilities on those red cards. So that's the uh, the downside of playing the red cards. It's a risk because your opponent might be thinking of playing an, ag an aggressive card too. And then if that happens, then you don't get to activate the effects of those cards. Of course, the other player, if the other player, like for instance, decided to play a, a normal card, a blue normal, they still get to activate their ability. So so that's the downside. You, you were, The enraged players don't get to do anything except move, but the blue, but the player who played the blue card can still get, use the ability and, and still move. So that's the downside. However, if someone does play a red card and only one player plays a red card, then they get to activate that red card. And it can be very devastating to the other players. Like this one here. All racers ahead of you must give you exactly two cards for each player who can't advance three hexes. So if they don't have two cards to give you after you play this card, you play this at a right time, you know you got at least one of your opponents over there only has one card, you can use this to also advance three additional hexes in addition to this here as well. So that's pretty powerful. Plus you could also get to uh two, you could also get two cards from your opponents. Now, why do you want to take cards from your opponents? Also, why do you want to do damage to your opponents? What does damage do? When you play a card, you might do some damage to them. So, like, for instance, this Thunder card here, all racers ahead of you take two damage. Whenever you receive damage, you have to discard a card, okay? So, you would have to, your opponents ahead of you, if you played this card, they would have to lose two cards. They would have to discard two cards, okay? So that's the problem with that. Of course, you're also losing the cards you play. So this card that I play, potentially play on a turn, regardless of whether I use its effect, get to use its effect or not, because it was a, perhaps a red card, regardless of the case, I'm still using it for its movement as well. And so regardless, I have to discard this card at the end of my turn anyway. And there is a problem if you run out of cards. At the end of a round, if you have no cards in your hand, because you're all out, because you perhaps used them all already for powerful effects to help you move up, or perhaps you were forced to discard a bunch of cards because a bunch of things happened to you. You got hit by a tornado or something like that, and you received damage, or you got hit by thunder, or one of these various items, which we will get to later, 
did some damage to you. You potentially could have a lot of damage and you could lose a lot of cards. But regardless, if you run out of cards completely, then your character must move back three spaces or three hexes. So whenever that happens, you must move back three spaces. So your advantage of being in a hit now causes you to go backwards three spaces. And then when that happens, you do get to draw more cards. So you'll get to draw five more cards. So you'll still have some cards to use for future turns, for you, for, 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 for future rounds. But yes, you're going to lose some, some uh, obviously some uh, cards for sure. And you're going to, it's going to cause you to for sure go backwards a lot too. So you want to go forwards, but sometimes you're going to go backwards too. So that's the scheming phase. That's that's the advantage of playing red, potentially, or not playing red and playing blue cards. You're going to get to move up, and you're possibly going to get to do some effects as well, potentially damaging your opponents in the process, causing them to lose cards, and to move further back on the track while you advance. That's basically what you want to do. This is just like Mario Kart, really. It is almost exactly like Mario Kart. Just as wild and zany as that video game. Um, so after everyone has schemed their cards, so after each player has, you know, put a card that they've chosen, okay, and then they obviously have revealed them, then the running phase happens. And, you know, obviously green doesn't work for that player, but like... Let's just choose a normal blue. So let's just say that was the equation for that player. Okay, so then turn order. Turn order. Starting with the player who is first in turn order, meaning me, as in Seeley, and I am this one here, I would then get to move up three spaces. So I'd go one, two, and I'd be here. Then I would throw one banana of two damage, and all hit racers must go back to hexes. So here's the banana. So the way the banana works is I have to throw it from a distance, like a foot away from the table, and if I hit a racer, even if it's my racer, even if it's one of even if it's my dino and dodo that gets hit, I go back two spaces. So do my opponents. So let's see if I can hit them. It actually went literally over them. It didn't hit them. It went completely over them. So nothing else would have happened. But then that would have been my turn. And then uh, Marsh and Spike would go next because they're up next in turn order. So they'd get to move up two spaces. So now they're here. And then they can flip uh, two eggs of one damage. And if both hit, they get to draw two cards. So you would, since there's another character here on the same space as me, he is just set aside for a moment. And then you would grab this egg. You're not allowed to use your thumb to flick. You have to just use your regular hands, your fingers, other fingers to hit, flick. But you could just like, for instance, flick this here. So, for instance, like that. It's close, so he got hit regardless. But if it was further away, then obviously it would be harder to do. But you're basically going to want to flick the egg to try to hit uh, the dinos behind you. Or in front of you, depending on where you're obviously hitting. Um, and then for each, obviously... Um, let's fix that. There we go. For each, uh, for each egg that hit they would receive one damage. And if both hit, you'd also get to draw two cards. So I, you know, so you'd get, obviously, to draw more cards, which is good, but your opponents would also get to, your opponent that got hit, or opponents that got hit, would also have to discard as well. But basically, yeah, you, which, that's what you want to do. So you want to try to do some damage, and then obviously, um, then it would be player three. Then player three would get to do what this does, this one allows uh, player three to move up four spaces. One, two, three, four. So now he's there. Oh, yeah, and technically since he got would have gotten hit twice, he'd receive two damage and he would have had to discard two cards. But then he would get to take one damage, and then doing so, 
he so it had to discard a card to use this card basically he would get to roll a dice and advance that amount so where's the dice here we go here's the dice and so what did i roll a five so he'd get to roll he'd get to move up five spaces one two three four five that's there we go keeps keeps zoning out on me the camera okay so yeah now now uh What's his name? Uh, Parks and Chris are way, way in the lead. But then again, that could obviously, you know, he, he may not be in the lead for long. And then that would be the end of round, okay? That would be the end of the round. And then at the end of the round, a few things are going to happen. Obviously, if you, ha if you have no more cards in hand, you're going to obviously have to uh, go back three spaces <laughs> and draw up to five cards. Also, what could potentially happen, whoever's in lead gets to move up one space. So since this Dino and Dodo are up one already in the lead, they'd get to move again. They'd get to move up one more space again. But all the other players that didn't get to move up one space would get to draw one additional card from the deck as well. So they're getting something for not being in first. And then if the game is, if the end of the round is, if the, if it's the end of the round and there's a dino that has passed the finish line, has made one full lap, then that would be the end of game. So you're just going to keep doing that until somebody wins. You might, you might feel like, uh, you might feel like you're at a disadvantage because look at this guy. He's way, way ahead. These two are way behind, but a lot of stuff can happen. A lot of stuff. Um... This is the uh, the log. If you get a card that lets you use this log, you get to basically put this. You, you what you'll do is you'll put the log into your hand like this into your fist, and then you'll place it over your dino. So let's just say if I was parking Chris, I would then get to roll it. And then if that log that I just rolled hit anybody, then they that would qualify as a hit. And depending what the card was, is the amount of possibilities you know whether they receive damage or go back backwards will depend obviously on the card that was played but yes if you use this rolling log that's what's going to happen you're going to place it over your you're going to put your fist over it and you're going to roll it like so that's how that works and the banana which was explained earlier if this you're just going to throw it like from the palm of your hand upwards and if it hits anything if it hits a dino, then obviously it qualifies as a hit. And if you hit your own dino, you're actually hurting yourself too. You can hurt yourself with a banana, just so you know. Um, uh, so that's, oh yeah, the banana. That's right. That's not how, that's how the feather works. Sorry. The feather is you're supposed to do it at the palm of your hand, okay? With the palm of your hand, with the feather, is how you'll toss it up into the air and from the palm of your hand. And if it hits it hits a dino, then obviously it's going to cause... Um, so let's just do a demonstration here. So let's just say we have these dinos here. I'm going to try to hit one of these guys. doesn't really matter. Let's just say I'm trying to hit that pink guy. And I'm going to try to toss it into the air from the palm of my hand. So let's see how this works. Okay, let's try again. Okay, that was better, but I didn't hit anybody. But still, that was better. So that's what you're trying to do with the feather, and it counts as a hit if it hits a dino. Um, the banana, I got the banana and the feather mixed up. So the banana still will, can still hurt me. Okay, so for instance, this dino here is me. If I hit myself with a banana, which is possible, I still get hit by the effect of the card, whatever that card may be, because there's several different banana cards with different effects, okay? Um, but the way it's going to work is you're going to basically put your elbow onto the table, so that's why you can't even see my hand, and you're going to flick, you're going to flick your wrist and try to flick the banana out of your wrist like this. So let's see if I can hit the pink guy. Nope, didn't hit him. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. See? That's how you're going to do it. Now, obviously, you're going to have it basically at the edge of the table. It's going to be farther away, but you get it 
that's kind of how that's going to work. And then the meteorite, the way the meteorite's gonna work is, let's say I want to hit the pink dinosaur, this guy, okay? Let's say I wanted to hit him. I have to do it at least one foot up above him, but then I drop the meteorite hoping to hit him. And I did. So that's how that's gonna work. So obviously the meteorite is really easy because you get to basically aim your hand over the dino you wanna hit. And look, I hit him again. So it's really easy to hit him, but it's still possible, I suppose, that it could miss. But yes, the meteorite is definitely the best item here. The log is also really good. The banana and the uh, feather are kind of difficult, but the, the egg is pretty pretty simple, you know? You know, see, that was a good flick. That was another good flick. See, so the egg's pretty good too, if you're good at flicking things without your thumb, obviously. No thumbs allowed in flicking, but just fingers. So this is a very dexterous game, mostly. Yes, there's some uh, strategy in this scheming phase of what card to play, but in reality, it's a dexterity game and just a game based on luck um, and stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much how you play the game, at least the basic general idea of how to play. That should, it, these, this should be enough this video should be at least enough for you to understand the basic game of Dodo's Riding Dinos. That's pretty much it. It's a simple game, and it's a quick game. Uh, the, the game is literally as long as this video was, okay? So it's a very short game, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It's really short. I played this, and it was it was, uh, it was was over before, before I knew what happened. And the dino that I was playing with, he was just like, whew, so far in lead. <laughs> because I was using all these good items, and obviously my opponents, which were also me, were purposely missing, so that way I could win <laughs> for the fun of it. But there is there is a solo rule, but I didn't really like the solo uh, version of this. It's a little uh, one-sided as well. But yeah, basically that's how you play the game. Um, that's how you play the game. If you're playing a four-player game, Four, three, two, one, doesn't matter the order from four to, to one. If you're playing four, three, two, or solo game, um, you're gonna pl you're gonna use the outer the outer uh track. Okay? The inner track is only if you're playing with five or six or seven or eight player or seven players, basically. And there's even a special variant for an eight player game. So you can play this game with eight people. So, yeah, pretty fun. Just like in an actual Mario Kart game where there's usually eight, or at least the original Mario Kart games were eight. This is this could be potentially be played with eight people, too. So it's meant as a funny, zany party game. Pretty fun, because it's not, you know, it doesn't take long to learn. It doesn't take, I mean, I probably went a little bit too far in the video. But it it doesn't take that much time to explain it and just have fun with it. And, you know, you can even play all four maps if you want, if you really want the full experience. But if you just want a quick little game, this is, this is one of them. This is pretty grandiose for just, a, for just like a 25-minute game. Okay, it's pretty fun. So that's, that's uh, Dodo's Writing Dinosaurs, and I hope this video explained how to play the game enough for you guys to play your first game of it. Obviously, there's additional rules for the other boards, additional abilities, racer abilities, um, that can make the game even more crazy, if, if you will, more zany, more, <laughs> more wild, but it's all in good fun. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you out. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to leave me a like, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.